going. So this is me in 2005. I was at my desk. I was a solicitor. I didn't really have much work to do. And um, yeah, I, it was it was a funny existence. I became a solicitor because um, my dad thought it was a good idea to do the law. And then I came out of university. I was like, yeah, maybe it is a good idea. Because actually, the difference between being a solicitor and being an entrepreneur is the fact that a solicitor has a pathway. It's a set pathway. So you have to go through schooling, go to university, do a law degree. When you finish the law degree, you have to do a diploma in law. When you've gone and done the diploma in law, you have to do, I even forget, forget now, a legal practice course. I can't remember where that is. Maybe that's in between. I can't remember. But then you have to get a job with a solicitors and you have to work with them for two years and you spend six months in four different departments. And then you do this legal practice course as well. I think that's before you start. See, this is how old I'm getting. I can't remember. And then you qualify. So that was me in 2005, the solicitor. And then in 2012, I, um, I think it was 2012. About 2012, I went, I watched YouTube, and I watched Simon on YouTube in Internet Business School, and that led to me being there in 2013 with my own book that I wrote, and then later on, a few years later, being on stage in front of all those people, which is the picture on the right. So it's if you're sitting here and you're in a normal kind of everyday job, then there is always a pathway to change, and sometimes it looks like it can be elusive, but there are definite ways to do it, and I've done it myself. Um, so, um, can, does anybody else think my sound is echoing? Um, because I haven't changed anything here, but if my sound sounds echoey, can you let me know? So, now you look at me in those pictures before, and this is the same, these are my pictures, but obviously rattle only a little. I don't know why it's rattling. I don't know how to fix that. I don't know how to fix it. Only a little. Uh, does that help? I don't know if I've really done anything. I don't know why it's rattling. Um, so it actually starts for us here, for all of us. So when we're born, we're born into whichever family we're born into, whichever culture, whichever country, all of those things. We have a family around us or we don't have a family around us, whatever our situation is. And this is where all the conditioning starts. This is where all the things that will help propel you forward in the future and all the things that will hold you back, they all start being generated as soon as you're born. And so this is part and part of when you're an entrepreneur, if you are an employee and you drop into um, a job, you are pretty much told what to do within that job. And so you're being given guidelines like I was as a solicitor. But then if you're an entrepreneur, what you'll find is that some of the things that happened during your childhood will be in your unconscious mind and may help hold you back. And this is where the work is, is in discovering things that you need to become free of to become the best part and best person of you. So this is me. Um, I always used to cry at my birthday parties. Always. I just did. It's just probably too much emotion. <clears throat> so as I said, this is where the conditioning begins. And you need to think about how do you go from where you are now to where you want to be? So a lot of you on this call would be like a special magic blueprint about which would give you all the step by step um, or all the step by step steps about, <laughs> that would take you from where you are now to where you want to be in the future. So take a second and have a think about where would you like to be this time next year? Um, if you want to just share it in, in the chat or if, you, if not, you can just pop it in on a piece of paper in front of you and just think about it because like a satellite navigator in your car, it's an, an amazing piece of equipment or like Google Maps, it's an amazing app on your phone but if you don't put in where you want to go it's never going to help you arrive at that destination so it's really important that you have a think about where you are now so if you have a regular job now maybe you want to replace that income and bring in a different amount of income by this time next year 
Um, so step by step by thinking through the process and about where you want to be is the way that you create your future. So have a think about that. So um, Nikos, thank you for sharing. We hope to have started a business. So, so that is brilliant. Um, and it's great you've got that goal. So the next step from that goal. So um, so that's Nico. If I, hopefully I'm saying it right, Nico. You hope to start a business. Clifford um, says he wants to have enough to cover all the rising costs of living. OK, so for both of you and for everybody else, if that's your goal, so you need to then start getting more specific. So you hope to start at a business. So what kind of business? Um, how much do you want to make? So Clifford, how much do you want? Do you want to bring in an extra £500 a month? And then you've got that goal then. You can see where you're working towards it and then start documenting it and then work backwards from that. So you have the overarching goal and then you need to think about the steps that are going to take you to that goal. And it's really important because then you can see if you're making progress. Okay. Um, so there isn't a magic boat, unfortunately. It's like you need this clarity and you need to have a purpose behind it because it can get really exciting when you're around people and you're thinking, this is brilliant, I'm going to do this, I'm going to start this business, I'm going to do this, that and the other. Um, but it does take time and it takes effort and it takes dedication and it takes... It, one of the things that you can do, which is really, really important, is create a consistent practice so for example I started writing newsletters and I wrote my 32nd I think yesterday the 33rd um, and that's been something I've done consistently on Fridays on LinkedIn over a period of time and it just becomes a practice now so every week I write the newsletter so if you want to change something in your life, then you need to start a consistent practice that will help you towards those goals. So think about um, something that you could do that would move you towards your goals. So for example, if you want to start a business and you don't know which business to do, um, you need to take a step on a consistent basis to move you towards that goal. So for example, I know on the Internet Business School website, there is a test you can do or a quiz, shall I say, which will help you decide what kind of business might be the best one for you. So you could do that quiz to start with. And then say that comes up with online marketing would be something that you'd be really good at. Then you need to think about, well, how do I learn more about online marketing and how can I put something in action from that? So a lack of discipline is a lack of clarity and purpose. So the two things are really, really connected and all the successful entrepreneurs have a discipline. Lots of them have a morning routine. Many of them have an evening routine and things that they do, for example, put their phone on airplane mode when they want to focus. But ultimately, consistency is key. That's what's really, really important. So there's lots of routes to change. So people will go along in their lives and things will happen, which will shift their the way that they are starting to approach and if you speak to most entrepreneurs there will be some point in their life that shifted for them so if you have read Simon Coulson's book he talks about how he ended up at the bottom of an escalator when he was working in London for BT and he fainted and fallen down the escalator and he was doing long hours and he um, then decided he was going to take redundancy and then went on his pathway which led him to running his online business. So it can be different for everybody. So you could be going through a career break, um, redundancy, divorce. You might have a breakdown um, or you might have children, something like that. And, and that's one of those things that kind of stops you in your track and moves you into this different route. So there's also kind of a lot, a lot of serendipity in these kind of connections as well. So, for example, with Simon, I happen to be shown a video of him on YouTube speaking about how you make money online and talking about his business and it just kind of happened and then I ended up going on his three-day course and um, I started getting introduced to loads of different concepts for example the law of attraction now if you've ever seen the secret has anyone ever seen the secret the secret is um, 
talks about the law of attraction and how it's basically about how your thoughts create your reality now in my opinion the secret is kind of very dumbed down and it doesn't it takes out the whole need for taking action you can't just think something and then hope it's just going to turn up but if you think something like I was saying about creating goals if you create goals for yourself and then you are thinking and you're having a positive mindset around that and looking for opportunities to move forward those goals that's how you will move forward and create these lives and create a successful entrepreneurial life. So this is the video um, that I watched of Simon back in the day, which took me to his three day diploma, and then eventually um, took me to being on stage um, at his diploma. Um, and I started teaching people about membership sites. So when you're thinking about um, what you want to do next, think about the things that excite you now. So what could you do where you feel like you're really in flow? Has anyone got any examples of things like that? Like things that you feel like time just disappears from you. And maybe you've never thought about it before, but have a think about the things that you do where time just goes by and you're thinking, oh gosh, three hours has passed or if something really intrigues you. So something that I do and a practice that I do often is I, um, if someone mentions a book, I will look it up straight away. And if it seems like it could be interesting, I will buy the book. And as you can see, I have a lot of books and it's taken me. And it's funny, like when you do that and you open up the next book, you're like, oh, that's what I was thinking about. It's kind of, it's kind of a strange process, but um, yeah, follow the signs. So I went on Simon's course, and during the course, there was a section about membership sites. And it was only a super small section, but I thought, oh, this, this is really interesting. I feel like this seems like a good idea. You can build relationships with people over time. And like, it sounded really exciting. So the next thing I did was I thought, oh, I feel like I want to write a book. Someone around me was writing a book and I thought I'm going to write all my knowledge into a book. So I got myself a mentor and this is um, Rick McMahon. And he mentored me and I created this book quite a lot of years ago. And um, it took me on this journey where I just kept following the steps. So sometimes if you feel like you don't know what to do next, it is just about following those steps, following on to the next step and the next step and seeing it where you go with it. Now, the next thing that's really important and what all entrepreneurs do is they are opportunity takers. OK, so every time an opportunity comes up, you need to lean into it. So, for example, Simon asked me if I would speak at one of his events. And so I stood there on stage and I spoke and it looks like I was talking about success in this in this particular um, seminar. I can't even remember it was so long ago, but the point is I didn't want to do it because I was scared. I didn't and hadn't done public speaking before. I didn't really want to stand up at the front, but I took the opportunity because he asked me. And then um, that's Daniel Priestley on the left. He wrote the book, um, How to Become a Key Person of Influence and Oversubscribed and Entrepreneur Revolution and 24 Assets, quite a few things. And um, I got to know him through one of his courses. Um, he asked me to um, run his client community and I took that opportunity because I'd got to know him, I'd helped out at events, all of those kind of things. Um, in the bottom corner over here, I pitched at an event um, and I was scared to do it, but I did it. So you need to take opportunities as and when they come up because that's the way to propel yourself forward. Um, who was my mentor? Well, I think I've got a slide actually of all my mentors in a minute. So that's coming up, Dave. Um, but I've had so many mentors. I've had Simon Dawson, Daniel Priestley. I've had Shah Wasmond. Uh, this is Robbie Richman. He's worked for a company called Zappos in America. He's a culture expert. Um, he took me to ING in Amsterdam, taught me how to facilitate an event. I've had possibly 30 plus mentors. And I think I've got a slide showing you some more of them in a minute. So this is really important for everybody on the call. Who is in your circle of influence? Who is in um, 
who do you spend the most time with? And there's a book that speaks about this, um, Stephen Covey's book um, about what's it called? The Seven Habits of Successful, Seven, Seven Habits of Successful People. No, that's not what it is. You know what I mean? Stephen Covey, Seven Habits. Um, who you spend your time with will rub off on you. So if you want to launch a business, are you surrounding yourself with people who are supporting that goal? Because if you're surrounding yourself with people who say it's not possible um, and you're not going to be able to do it, it's not going to be a, an environment that's going to help you achieve it. Now, I'm not saying you're not going to be able to achieve it. I'm saying that it's going to be harder for you to achieve it. And then um, I was going to say something else. Then. Um, but yeah, you need to find people who will support your goals. It's really, really important. So here you go, Dave. Here are some of my mentors. So um, I've had, I actually added it up and I have had over 30, but there's Rick McMunn. He was my um, book mentor. Um, Alexi Panos, she was a business mentor of mine. Uh, Jackie Nectal. Um, so Jackie and Justin were mentors. They helped with, um, they were both mentors in respect of a mastery in mindset and flow and releasing unlimited beliefs, all of those kind of things. This is Jules Schroeder. She was a men mentor of mine. She um, runs the Unconventional Life Retreats. Alan Wick, thank you. And thank you, that's right. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, that's it, definitely. Um, Simon Coulson, uh, mentor for years and years. Martin Norbury, he wrote this book, uh, I Don't Want Fridays. Daniel Priestley, um, Hannah, uh, Shah, Robbie, who I said, um, Stephanie, she helped me with NLP and limiting beliefs, um, Preston Smiles, Andrew Davis, he's social media, he was at the beginning of um, all when communities were set up, um, like MySpace, he worked with MySpace, um, and this is Joe Gregory, and he's my book mentor, another book mentor, I had two book mentors. I have 30 other, I have a lot more. So it's really important. So all this information, you think about the successes of all these people and they're all really highly successful in their fields. Like hanging around these people is only going to be good for you because their habits and their, the ways they do things, they leave clues. And it also, they also don't do this. So Simon loads of times has said to me, you need to do X, Y, and Z and don't do this. And I've learned lots from Simon over the years. So um, definitely get yourself lots of mentors. Also, it's important, like I was saying, like who are your actual friends? So this is a friend of mine, Lindsay, who I met on a business retreat. And we speak most days um, by a Voxer, which is a uh, like a walkie-talkie thing, but it's a bit like WhatsApp voice message, but you can do it in real time if you want to, but we don't. But she runs her own business. She has multiple businesses. She's super successful. And so she's in my corner. And so if I have issues, she just is able to help me through them. And she's just a good person to be around because she has that kind of men, that um, mindset, which really, really helps. So um, definitely think about who your friends are. So this is something that lots of people have shared with me and I've experienced myself. And that is that once you start going through these processes, once you start reading new information, once you start doing different courses, um, you'll start to change. And that is the whole point, because if you are in the same position you are now, if you want to stay in this position, you need to do the things that you're doing now. If you want to be somewhere different, if you want to be bringing in more money next year, if you want to start a business next year, you need to shift the circumstances and the experiences that you're currently having, because if you don't shift anything, you're going to have the same experiences next year. So that goes from your mindset to um, the people you're hanging out with, to the things you're consuming, all of those things, you'll change. And that's the difficult thing, because people around you will feel threatened by that. And if people feel threatened by that, um, it will make them insecure. And so they will come back to you with this and they'll be like, you've changed, you're not the same person you were anymore. Well, that is the whole point. And actually, even though that can be painful because people start, you might lose friends or have different friend groups, um, at least it's a sign that things are changing and making a difference. So 
so don't forget it is painful like it's not all it's not all rain, rainbows and unicorns or whatever the expression is it, it is hard and you can lose relationships you can lose friends um, people you won't feel understood by the people who you surround yourself with and this is the thing this is the secret secret life basically behind being an entrepreneur it's not all it's not all easy and that's why a lot of people um that's why a lot of people do just stick in the same jobs that's why they stay in the same jobs doing the same thing year after year after year because it's it's easier so you may not enjoy that job but it is less painful in some respects because you have that sort of consistency so um, just be aware of that now this is super important what are you feeding your mind with so if you are not consuming things that are helping you towards your goals it's going to be hard to get to them so does anybody listen to ted talks because ted talks are really really um great for learning for getting new perspectives all of those kind of things so anybody listen to ted talks the other thing you the other more local uh, let me put it in the chat the do lectures they have thousands i think that's the website um they have thousands and thousands of website uh, of talks from people who've done inspiring things in the world and ted talks and the do lectures they spread ideas they spread people who've overcome challenges they spread people who've started new jobs um not new businesses who have changed things in the world there's all kinds of just inspiring stuff they're just things that will light you up and they will move you into a new direction because if you spend the evening watching um love island or something like that it's it might give you a lesson in human how human connection works. I mean, I, I haven't watched Love Island, but it's about, isn't it about, I don't know what it's, it's about couples getting together, isn't it, on an island? Is that it? I don't know. But Next Door Neighbours watches it, right. I don't really know what it's about. I think it's about some, I think they put couples into some place and then watch how they interact. I think that's ha what happens. Um, so you might learn stuff about human behaviour, but is that going to help you start a new business? Maybe not. But if you spent the evening watching a TED talk where you heard about someone who brought water into a village that no, didn't have it before and they raised loads of funds and they saw this opportunity to open up a business which did X, Y and Z, you're going to be like firing like that. Or you're going to listen to the drama. You can listen to the drama of somebody falling out because someone, some boy looked at some other girl and she wasn't doing this and he wasn't doing that. And that's ultimately as well, like the news, you look at the news, it's very negative and it brings up all the things that are bad in the world. And yes, there is a lot of bad in the world and there's a lot of upset and there's a lot of pain right now in all respects. However, there's also a lot of good. There's also a lot of opportunity. There's opportunity in recessions, there's opportunity in the world regardless, but you need to look for those opportunities. So start feeding your mind with something that's going to help you towards those, like have that positive impact in the world rather than joining in the, the story of negativity. So, um, so yeah, look at the TED Talks and the Do Lectures. Um, and Anne Curie has listened to TED Talks. Brilliant. Excellent. There's always something good. Anne Rosemary has as well. Brilliant. So another thing I want to say is, is Use your resources and work out how to do things because sometimes it's easy to ask the question. So I'm part of a WhatsApp group and someone in the WhatsApp group asked for somebody else to contact them. But that person's in the group, their phone number is in that group. It's like it doesn't take too much to say, okay, well, I can just contact them myself. But it's almost like not taking responsibility. You can take responsibility. You can use Google. Children can use Google. So if there's something that you're interested in or you something you want to find out, just put it into Google and find it. So you need to take responsibility for yourself and not put it out onto other people. Um, because, you know, we're all trying to do our best with the tools that we've got. And it's really important that you take responsibility and don't project it onto other people. So so here's an analogy for what your values are. So 
if you think about yourself as a tree and you're standing there and you've got your branches and if you look at the branches of your life and if you take a look around where you are now you will see clues as to things that are important so for example if you have a um, have some weights in, in the corner of your room now and you use them regularly you can see that you are someone who values health and exercise because you've got the weights and you're using the weights and you're exercising with them because you value your health if you always get mcdonald's six times a week and um you never go for a walk and never do any exercise you can see that health is not one of your priorities and there's no judgment on that it's just like having a look and saying what is it that surrounds me what is it that i value so i value growth and contribution um, hence why i am surrounded by books and um, that's why i've had all those mentors that's why i have lots of business courses because that's what that's what lights me up and le learning and all of those kind of things. So have, have a think about the things that are around you. you know, it could be family, it could be um, um, like health, education, freedom. That's a big thing. Like, do you value freedom? And maybe in certain circumstances, you can see. So if you are going to a family environment and you feel yourself tense in that environment and not really enjoying it, what's not the what's the mismatch in that environment? Is there something not being fulfilled in you? So if you value being able to communicate freely, but you can't in a certain environment, you're going to feel some kind of response in that in your body. So maybe you need to think about whether you're in the right space and what you can do to... Um, make changes there so think about yourself as a tree and the branches that come off that tree and when you make decisions so if for example you really value freedom uh, and what how does that what does freedom mean to you and then you need to dig down a bit more but for example I didn't like being confined to an office space as a solicitor because I like to be more free and it didn't suit me at all so if I went into a conventional job, maybe I would be better doing something like delivery driving because it wouldn't confine me to an office because I'm supporting my value of freedom and being stuck into an office all day did not support that value. So think about the things that you value um, and do some research into values. It's really important because if you align your values, you will attract people who have similar values to you and that will help you achieve the goals that you want to achieve because it's almost like you have your group around you you have people to collaborate with so I created a community of people and the community of people have similar values and so we help each other out and we collaborate and we get each other very quickly because we have the similar values so yes Clifford, living without constraints is a good way to define the freedom so like I say, minor growth and contribution. So I invest in, in my growth and I like giving value to others. So the community I started, I did it just because I wanted to. I didn't do it as a business idea initially, um, but it was something I wanted to do. I wanted to bring and contribute to others. I wanted to create more opportunities for connection. So that, that's an example of mine. So entrepreneurship is not just about having a strategy so you can get strategies all the time so do x y and z um, and then you will get these results but if you read the book or know of Seth Godin Seth Godin's um, a really great writer for entrepreneurs um, and The Dip is a book about how you will go through ups and downs um, and he talks in that book about, you know, like it says in the title there, like of knowing when to quit and when to stick, because entrepreneurship is a roller coaster. Um, and I've been on the roller coaster for nearly 10 years, and it's it has good times and where you feel really free and you bring in lots of money and you're doing lots of things. And then there's times where if you aren't putting the stuff out there or aren't open to opportunities, or maybe you're struggling yourself personally, it will have a knock-on effect with your business. So it's really important that you think about entrepreneurship as much more than just a strategy. And this 
um, 80-20 rule works pretty much for everything. So for example, if you build a community, 80% of the members in your community, say you had a Facebook group, 80% would be passive and then 20% would be active. And then probably one to two percent are you really super active. But this is about your mindset. It's 80 percent uh, mindset and 20 percent action, really, because the action comes from having the mindset to do it. So that's why it's really important that you focus on your mindset. Um, so limiting beliefs are really tricky. <laughs> so um, because quite often you don't even know you've got that limiting belief, but it holds you back. So has anyone read the book by Gay Hendricks called The Big Leap? Um, and The Big Leap talks about how we can get to a certain ceiling. And when we get to that ceiling, it's like the ceiling of where we feel comfortable. So we feel comfortable up to a certain point. And then we get a little bit like, mm, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not feeling quite so great about this. Like, And so we then self-sabotage. So either we procrastinate or we don't do the work or this applies to everything we do in life, whether we're talking about businesses where you get to a certain level, bring in a certain income, and then for some reason you don't go above that income. And I spoke to a friend of mine about this and her dad does her books. And she said to me that he had told her and she's done lots of different work. So she's worked for, she's been employed. She's, she's been self-employed. She's done lots of different things. And, and her dad said to her, do you know that you've always reached around this same level, whether you're employed or self-employed, you always get to the same level each month. And I just thought it was super interesting because there's something in her psyche there's something in her beliefs maybe she grew up and thought that only she only saw that men succeeded for example or men make all the money or women aren't this I'm just making up these ideas but we have lots of ideas that we picked up in those first pictures I showed you you pick up things all the time about um what is possible for me or I live in this time or you think you can't earn money now because we are in the midst of a recession or there isn't enough to go around. We, we have these ideas in our heads and the big leap talks about this and it talks about how we cap ourselves and even in relationships, maybe we get to a certain part and then maybe if we're too scared to open up to somebody, then we will self-sabotage that relationship So and make it finish before we get too close. So um, actually, I saw that in the, has anyone watched the Netflix series? It's called Just Breathe. I just finished that one. It was, uh, and she'd got all these limiting beliefs. She didn't want to get close to people. It was, quite, it was a good series, actually. Shall I tell you what happens at the end? Uh, I'm not going to. Right. I was wondering at the end, definitely was. Is this making sense to everybody? Let me know. Let me know. Hopefully you can still hear me. I'm sorry about the sound. Hopefully it's okay. So has anyone heard of Maslow? Excellent. Thank you, Kifford. Maslow created um, a theory around human motivation and what motivates us. Excellent. Thank you. And that sounds not too bad. Brilliant. That's great. I shouldn't. It always seems like, I don't know if it's the software today. Brilliant. 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 Yay, you're all there. So lonely this side, tell you that, it's so lonely. So lonely being here without having people to talk to in real life. So as I was saying, Maslow created this theory about human motivation and the things that motivate us as humans. And um, quite often this is shown in a um, triangle. This one is slightly different, um, but at the bottom is our physiological needs. Um, excellent, that's great, Rob, well done. You know something, there's some, there's some, Rob says he's making lots of notes. There is something about the things we don't write down, we lose like 90% of the stuff we don't write down. So if anything, even one thing resonates, write it down because um, it's super important. So Maslow 
says that humans are motivated in his theory by certain needs. And once you get the needs on one level, you go up to the next level. So we are very motivated, obviously, to survive. And so at the first level, we're motivated to ensure that we have air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, and that we can reproduce. They're like our fundamental um, human needs. And then once we get that, um, safety is super duper important. So this can be financial safety and emotional safety. And so this is one of the reasons, for example, in the work environment, how, um, and in lots of other environments, we won't speak up. So in a working environment, we might not speak up because we fear that if we speak up, we may um, be ostracized we may then lose our jobs we then may lose our homes we can't pay our mortgage or our rent and then we might lose our partner and we might end up in the street now that's a dramatic turn of events from talking up but fundamentally we try and keep the status quo in many relationships because it could threaten our safety and this is another reason why when you start shifting as an individual then it can be difficult in terms of your relationships. So if you are in a partnership with someone and you start changing, it is a threat to their security and to their safety because they don't know, they don't feel secure in this new person who's showing up with a new set of needs. Um, and so, um, not that I'm here to give relationship advice, but the best thing is always communication. So if you are going through new stuff, um, it is always best to communicate and I say that from someone who's not been great at communicating in the past um, so it's definitely all these things were definitely a work in progress so so safety and then above that comes love and belonging you know the need for friendship and intimacy family and having a sense of connection and that's really really important um, for people and that's why um, you know we had such solidarity during the um, pandemic because people started connecting much more because they could connect over a shared issue, which was the pandemic. And people started connecting and we have this new sense of community that came about. And then on top of that, esteem, um, self-respect, um, status recognition. And then at the very top, when we have all of those needs met underneath and self actualizations at the top, so the desire to become the most that one can be. So that's right at the top. So whether or not we ever reach self-actualization is probably a whole other webinar. But um, this is some of the stuff that is worth researching if you're interested in how you go through changes as an entrepreneur and how you can, you can look at people around you and you can see why they are sensing that things are changing with, with you and why that affects their, them as well. So... Excellent. I'm glad you haven't seen it. Well, I'm not glad you haven't seen it, but I'm glad I've given you um, an insight. So yeah, look into Maslow. And this is the thing. It's like it's super interesting thing about human behavior is so much of it and why we take certain actions is because of what Maslow talks about in his hierarchy of needs. So we will do things just to get, you know, to get our phys physiological needs met and then safety on top and safety is so, so important. So so definitely check that out. So procrastinating. Who's ever procrastinated? Me, 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 me. Anybody else? And yeah, thank you, Clifford. Yes, Clifford, very honest. I reckon everybody. Yeah, look at you all the time, all the time. Now, why do we procrastinate? I'm the worst, to be honest. Um, you might just think, you probably never even thought about this, but it's actually keeping you safe from something. So say you didn't procrastinate, say you started that online course, say you put it out there, say it made you lots of money. Like that could threaten your safety because your friends might think, oh, I don't want to be friends with her anymore because she's made all this money and she's doing X, Y, and Z and she's doing blah, blah, blah. And so you procrastinate. And I know that's deep, but this stuff is, yeah, fear, fear of failure, Neville, brilliant. That's a massive thing. Like, you put yourself out there and it doesn't work and then you failed. Now, I wish I knew the magic thing to not procrastinate. Um, and I wish I could say I never procrastinate, but the fear of failure is definitely like, the biggest procrastinating thing ever. Okay. And 
the only way I've overcome this ever. And um, it's by taking action. So, and you know what? If you don't try, then to be honest, you're a failure anyway, really. You just need to try. So yeah, think about what it's keeping you safe from. Um, do you know what helped change Craig? Craig said he used to do it more, way more than you do now. I'll tell you something else that's um, is having a goal and a time frame. That is a great thing for procrastination. So in my book, my first book, I had the mentor, like I told you about. And then I think we started working together in November. And we we're going to have it printed in February. And then he let me know in December, I think. He said, oh, by the way, we need to get it back to the copywriter by, not the copywriter, I wrote it, whatever they're called, the person who paginates it, by um, typesetter, that's what it was. I had to get it back to her by the 4th of January. So basically, I wrote it in five weeks because I had a deadline. So Craig's tips are self-accountability. Yes, that is brilliant. Having a buddy. You didn't say that, but that is uh, have a buddy to work with. Setting goals, tracking app, setting time aside mid work to have a break. Yes. And one of my millions of mentors said this to me, look at your diary. And if you haven't pegged out certain times in the week to do things, it won't get done. So your diary is a really good indication of where you are. Um, so the best entrepreneurs I've worked with have got their diary sectioned into different things throughout the week. So they know what they're doing. And that is a hard thing to do as an entrepreneur, especially an entrepreneur who likes freedom. So I like freedom so much that when people put one-to-one with me I always find it hard to do it so they have to, they just do it automatically and it just goes into my diary because otherwise I procrastinate too much so um, thank you Craig um, and Neville says you regret the things you didn't do rather than the things you did definitely that is so true so um, so you would have learned to stay safe so think about hierarchy of needs you would have learned to stay safe um, at a young age from something. So maybe if you grew up and there was a lot of um, anger around, maybe you learned to keep quiet so you wouldn't spark anything going forward. And there's lots of things in the unconscious mind that you can pick away at to understand what's going on in your head. So there's different modalities you can use to um, unpick the unconscious mind. And um, I share these three just because I've done them. Um, breath work. Has anyone ever done breath work? Breath work is super powerful. It's one of those things, a bit like going for a run, where um, I'm pausing because my dog is down there and she doesn't sound great. I'm like, what's going to go on in the moment? Um, but anyway, breath work um, is one of those things like if you want to go for a run and you don't want to do it and then you come back and you're like, yes, I feel good. So breath work is harnessing the breath to move the energy in the body and it can release stuck emotion in the body. Um, it's super powerful, kind of like, I don't wanna do this, but it's really good afterwards. Uh, meditation, I meditate every day. I've, got, I've done like 700 days now. Um, I use a, an app called Insight Timer. I usually do it before I go to bed to make sure I've done it. You know, it's, sometimes it's a minute, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's 15, but it's just a good practice to be in. And hypnosis, I've tried hypnosis as well. Um, it's not really much I haven't tried to be honest um, but it's a continual journey um, there's other things you can do there's something called human design that looks at how you are um, like when you were born and etc cetera, etc cetera, and creates this whole thing about what kind of person you are uh, soul plan I actually became a soul plan practitioner a few years back and that looks at your name that you're given when you're born and the energies around your name and it's actually scarily accurate uh, which is a crazy thing. Um, you can do intuitive work, neuro neurology. Depends how open you are to all this stuff. Like you're on, you could be open-minded, or you think this is all a load of rubbish. But the best, not the best, but some of the top entrepreneurs are into this work, um, and I've seen it firsthand. And most of them have this spiritual level with them. You read the book by Blue Marsden? Yeah, it's really good. It is a really good book. Um, yeah, so I'm glad someone else has read it. It's super good. I should do some more of it, really. I haven't done it for a while. 
Um, book recommendations. If you want to open yourself up to thinking in a different way, I've bought this a few times for quite a few of my friends. One of my friends, actually, she read it a few years after I gave it her and she said she wasn't quite ready for it when she saw it. So maybe there's probably a sample on Amazon that you could see if you're in the space for it. But it is a really good book um, to start with. The Four Agreements. I've spoken about this before on webinars. Um, and it is a it's a short book, but it's also a good book. It's about not taking things personally. Um, I can't remember quite what the four agreements are, but one is don't take things personally because you really don't know. When I talked about the conditioning that children have early on and what I've had, you could say something to me now, which would really trigger me because it, it reminds me of something that happened in my past. You could say it to somebody else and they wouldn't even bat an eyelid at it. And that's how we navigate life. We don't really know what other people have experienced. Um, and so it's best not to think, take things personally. So um, there's a Facebook for, ad for free for agreements training based on the book. Wow, that sounds good. You probably all get it now because Facebook's listening, isn't it? So um, yeah, look at the four, the training for four agreements. These things all add to your repertoire and all the successful entrepreneurs I know have an understanding of some of these concepts. So definitely look into them. Um, Again, this is a, probably a little bit of a deeper book, but David L. Hawkins talks about letting go and how you let go of lower emotions like guilt and anger, and it helps you move it onto the next emotion as you move up, a bit like the gut hierarchy of needs. So letting go of the lower vibrating energies. So if you are, you know, if you're in a good mood, you'll probably see lots of people um, you'll have nice experiences. So things will just work out. You'll just get a parking space or you will meet someone or someone will offer you something or a free coffee or whatever it might be. And that's because you're in that kind of energy of everything's going well. Whereas when you're in that energy of closed down or upset or guilt or anger, you will probably have a bad day that goes along with it. Um, so um, just... Switching on some little concepts, I'm going to it too much. Could you put the other book title in the chat? Um, which book was it? I've got the Four Agreements. Uh, four Agreements, is that the one we wanted? Four Agreements. Um, we've got the Untethered Soul. Oops, I can't spell Untethered Soul. Just check them out on Amazon. See, don't, you don't necessarily have to um, get them all. Just see if they feel like you feel interested in them four agreements and then uh just a few just a few whoops um so any book by the do so these are the do lectures i was telling you about there's lots of different things on different topics they're really nicely written i definitely recommend you read them or read any of them that feel like exciting to you so you've got do walk do well baking do photo just things to move you into a different space of of just shifting your mindset into a more growth mindset and then just follow the breadcrumbs so if something feels exciting go for it like just it, you know where it's going to take you follow it up if it says look on our website go and look on the website see what's on the website it's just about doing things like that now I really like this book um when I read it a few years ago um and it's the magic of thinking big so are you would you say you're lucky or unlucky Anybody here say, what would you say, what would you class yourself as? Um, and in this book, The Magic of Thinking Big, Lucky, yes, this is a good, this is good, Lucky. Um, it's what opportunities do you create? So in The Magic of Thinking Big, I like the book because it said, for example, if you go to an event, do you always sit at the back or do you sit at the front? So if you always go in and sit at the back, go and sit at the front. So it's just like doing things differently um, or putting your hand up. And I did this actually. And uh, I went to an event just before lockdown and I sat at the front and I put my hand up and I asked a question. And even though I do a lot of public speaking, I'm still nervous to ask the question. And then the guy kind of took me, he kept referring to me throughout the presentation. At the end, he is a guy, um, his name is... Um, Emmanuel Wilfred 
Manuel Welford, that's it, because he's known as there's a type of there's a sausage brand and it's called the Black Farmer Sausage Black Farmer Sausages. And um, he set that up and he kind of uh, took me under his wing and it's a long story, but we kind of started working together for a while. And that's because I sat at the front and put my hands up. So what opportunities do you take and which do you create? So if you don't feel like you're a lucky person, create some more opportunities. Um, that's okay, Joanna. So are you an optimist or a pessimist? Like, is the glass half empty or half full? If you're someone who is half empty, how can you shift into that optimistic mindset? Like I was saying about entrepreneurs, they all have um, routine. So what's yours? Do you wake up, put the television on, watch the news? Is that a good start? Do you wake up, look at your phone, go on Facebook, go on Instagram? Is that a good start? So think about how you can shift that. Maybe put your mobile phone out of the bedroom. Think about doing something different in the morning that you don't do. Go out, take some massive breaths, go for a walk. And you'll see you'll set yourself up because otherwise you let other people rule your day. So you'll go down this rabbit hole, you'll wake up. And I see this doing it myself occasionally, like waking up, you look on Instagram and you think, oh, I don't look like that. Or they don't, I'm not doing this. And then you get down on yourself. Don't start your day like that. You've got no one else to impress but yourself. Like, Don't compete with others, compete with yourself. So your tomorrow is defined by your today. So there'll be somebody on this webinar, hopefully multiple people, who will take action from what's happened today. This could be the journey of something amazing for some of you. This will be the first step. Like the time that I watched that YouTube video, which led me to Simon, which led me along the whole journey I've done for the last 10 years, which has been, um, you know, it's been amazing. It's been scary. It's been sad. It's been happy. But equally, I'm so glad I'm still not sitting in that solicitor's office. So what you do today will define what happens tomorrow. So your thoughts, you know, try and consume less news, consume less social media, lock things out in your diary. This is what the successful entrepreneurs do and they get stuff done i'm like working with simon you know sometimes he asks me to do stuff and he's like oh, have, you, have you done this and i was like you gave it me like 10 minutes ago he's on it he's always on it and it's a really good skill to learn um disciplines freedom so keeping discipline is like i was saying about the newsletter do it regularly or don't do it at all if you dabble people don't trust you they don't know if you're going to turn up or not turn up so Discipline is freedom. Dabbling is misery. Don't get too freaked out because an inch is progress. So celebrate the wins. Like even something small. You turned up today. You, you lot are all on this webinar today. You were winning. So give yourself a point for that because some people are still sleeping. Um, and discipline is the bridge from dream to accomplishment because then you'll feel amazing. So Discipline, it's not a big action. It's just a consistent, small action that gets you there. And there's um, somebody who does health and fitness. And she always talks about this. She went from, she lost loads of weight, became super fit over a period of time. And she'll always say, don't say you're going to join the gym and go three times a week because you're probably not going to do it. And then you're going to fail. Go with something small, like go for a walk around the block and add from there. That's the best way to do it. So you create your own reality, is my belief, um, and it's through your conscious and your unconscious beliefs and experiences. So put into action some of the things that I've said to you over the last um, hour and see how you can sh make small shifts in your, um, you know, in your own reality, because then you'll move yourself into a new one. And before we move on to Craig, I'm just going to share this video with you. You may have seen it before. Um, but you might not have done. So, but before I do that, just take a deep breath. That's why I get this. So, let me just see. Can you see? Let's have a look. Can you see? Let me see. I've lost my chat now as well. Where are you? <clears throat> Let's see. Can you see the video on the screen? Yes, you can. Thank you. Okay. 
I couldn't find my chat box, that's why I was moving around. Right, okay. That on. Right, you can see the video. Okay, I'm going to play this now. If you can't hear the sound or anything, can someone just say to me in the chat box? I'll stop. And I don't care who you are, what race, what age, what gender. I don't care about any of that stuff. But what I do know is that you have a dream inside of you. And that dream you have kept hidden from the world. You've made excuses for it. You've delayed it. You've listened to people telling you to be realistic. But deep down in your heart, you know that you're not living to your potential. And life is now something you're just getting on with. I want to lay some, some reality on you real quick. Where is the wealthiest place in the world? Do you know? It's not China. It's not Dubai. It's the graveyard. Because in the graveyard, you will find inventions never invented. Business is never erected. Songs never sung. Books never written. Ideas never nurtured. People never realized. Because they were scared to take a risk. Scared like you. But you want to know something else? You're not in the graveyard yet. And every we get one life, right? And every passing moment, we will never get back again. You would never start this video with the same perspective you had when you click play. You would never brush your teeth the same way twice in your life. Ain't no rewind button on life. I would never get that breath back ever again. See, this present moment is so precious. We have to be here. We have to be in it and make the most of it. We have to live our dreams now because they are possible. 6,000 years ago, Man created the wheel only 6,000 years ago. First written language was created. Six, that's it. And if I may remind you, the airplane is only a little over 100 years old. There was no internet 50 years ago. No cell phones. So don't sit here and tell me that everything that, that can be done has been done. When we haven't been here for very long, there are dreams, there are, there are ideas and accomplishments that are waiting to be discovered, that are waiting for you. Helen Keller was once asked, what on earth would be worse than being born blind? She said, it would be so much worse to be born with sight, but no vision. Why can't we have cures for every disease known to man? Why can't we have clean water, food, education for every person on this planet? Why can't we have peace on this planet? Why do we have to die to go to heaven? The earth is already in space. We can have heaven right here, right now. Just to shift in this. Why not? Because somebody said it, it's impossible. It can't be done. I'll tell you this. There's never been a statue erected for a critic. Everybody tell you how to do it. They never did it. Moral of the story is, do you be you. And be here now. Your dreams are possible. Stop obsessing over these celebrities. Kim Kardashian. Live your life. Step into your greatness. He said the average person dies at 25, but is buried at 75. You know what that means? Unless you figure it out. Don't let this negative world get to you. Don't let it win. Do not go where the path may lead, but go where there is no path. And leave a trail. So, there we go. That is the end of the presentation. <laughs>